practical engagement is one of the most important things we think that we do. We want to give students the opportunity to learn a range of different skills and then actually apply them in ways that they care about. And what the IDP does is it lets students pick a country that they're interested in, identify policy issues that they care about, figure out how to pull together the skills they've learned in their classes to learn more about those policy issues and then go on the ground and um, visit the country and learn more from actually talking to people who are actively involved in those policy issues. In the classroom study very often here, as at any university, is uh, dominated by academic professionals, professors like myself, who know maybe a fair amount of the academic literature uh, on the topics that they're concerned with. Uh, they may or may not have had much experience with policy out in the field. Uh, isn't nearly as valuable as the students being able to talk to the people who are directly engaged with it. So uh, going to these developing countries, meeting uh, quite intensively with people in government, with people in non-governmental organizations, with people in international institutions, uh, sometimes with people in business. These are the sorts of things that students in the IADP in the past have done. It's a really unique opportunity for students to really test their hands at, at uh, solving, analyzing and trying to solve policy problems when they uh, look at them as they unfold in other places. And, what I really like about the IEDP is that it's a kind of a hands-on type of a project. And disaster strikes quite often whenever there's a natural disaster or a man-made disaster. Um, it's, it's quite often the case that agencies collaborate and try to respond um, and try to pull together any resources that they can without actually thinking about what their output and outcome is. Um, and I think the country has been subject to all these external shocks. So there have been economic shocks, there have been natural disasters, and then all that has heavily um, impacted um, the, the kinds of tourism activity that they do. So I think our Sometimes I'm afraid. So the island is very small and it has two landfills. And those landfills will be, in about six years, um, they'll reach capacity, which is a big problem for the island. And um, there's also some dumping into the sea, which obviously is not a long-term option. So it's actually surprising. A lot of people might not realize this, but uh, the economy is really heavily dependent on waste management. Um, because tourism makes up such a large part of the economy, um, and tourism is relies on this idea or this reputation of Grenada being this very beautiful the tourist destination, vacation place. Um, if waste management isn't, if that system isn't efficient and the country is known as being a dirty country, tourism is going to decline and that will really hurt the economy. Um, and so we are looking at Grenada's um, experience with the Millennium Development Goals. Um, the challenges that they face in the small island developing state uh, with meeting the requirements and how the money development goals influenced their policy decisions in terms of poverty reduction in Grenada. Sit down and take this thing to consideration. It do no good for our nation, no. So if we want the country to be outstanding among the rest, we got to try some constructiveness. So I want to tell all your people who create in the trouble, it's time to check up on yourself and put hatred on the shelf. You'll be proud. I love my Grenada, my homeland forever. Sing the chorus louder. Tell them about Grenada, the land of my grandfather. She will always prosper. Oh, my Grenada, my food, clothes, and shelter. Grenada is such a 
If we learn to pull we hand, do the little dog. 